everyone. Have you ever noticed how the college application process can be stressful? Well, stay tuned. I'll be sitting with Bruce Epstein from First Choice College Counseling. Hi, this is Ron Periello. I'm sitting here with Bruce Epstein with First Choice Counseling, uh, college counseling that is. And uh, how are you today, Bruce? I'm well, thank you. Good morning. Morning. Uh, I just want to go ahead and uh, ask you a little bit about your background, and then we'll go ahead and address some of these questions you have for me. I'll... Uh, sure. Absolutely. Okay. So the college application uh, application process, uh, well, actually, before I ask you the questions, maybe tell us a little bit about the services. Well, so First Choice College Counseling is a full service, you know, college application service. Um, usually we get students coming to us, uh, usually junior year or very early senior year, sometimes uh, as early as sophomore or even freshman year. Um, and we just help families through the college application process. And, um, um, you know, we've been in business about 10 years. I happen to attend MIT and I used to um, do a lot of alumni interviews for MIT. And, uh, uh, you know, eventually um, my wife, Michelle Sweeney, who's also my partner in crime, um, you know, we eventually decided to go into college counseling and, uh, you know, we've been doing it you know, for quite a while, helping hundreds of students uh, get into all types of schools. Perfect. That's, that's very uh, admirable. And uh, you went into stressful for students. How do you recommend they, they actually deal with the, the stress? Um, that's a good question. I mean, our, our tagline is taking the stress out of college success. Right? The idea right. is that there's lots of paths to college. You know, we don't have time to talk about all of them in detail today. Right. But um, there's you know, thousands, literally thousands of colleges in the U.S. Um, and, you know, everybody always talks about 10 or 20 famous ones, but um, the vast majority of colleges are what's called open enrollment. Um, and that means, you know, anyone who signs up with a high school diploma can attend. And, um, you know, we deal with students, you know, some are straight A students and some are C and D students or struggling to even finish high school and, you know, need a bridge program. So there's, um, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of great, great colleges that you can get an absolute wonderful education at. And, um, you know, so the first thing we tell people is they will find a college that likes them that they like back. And, uh, you know, the, they will find success in the end. I think just knowing that end point that it's going to work out in the end takes down a lot of the strategy. Sure. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the actual process, the application process, and uh, what it takes to actually get into the college. Sure, sure. Well, so again, there's a wide variety. Um, you know, most people come to us, um, you know, like I said, usually around junior year when the student starts thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I don't want to make a blanket statement about how all colleges require this or that. I'm going to tell you kind of, you know, at the very most basic level, you know, a high school diploma. Um, um, but, you know, for most of the students that are contacting us, let's say they're interested in, you know, their state university, whether it be Rutgers here in New Jersey or UC Berkeley or something like that, um, there's a pretty standard list of things that at least cover everything you need, right? So it's your number one is your grades and, um, people say GPA, but it's really your overall transcript, right? So. You know, getting a hundred in gym does not count right. towards you know bringing up your GPA right. at all the colleges, um, and they look at what classes you take and uh, how hard they are. You know, are they honors classes? Are they AP classes? But in general, number one, two, and three on the list of how you get into college is have a, a good solid transcript. You know, so hopefully, um, you know, mostly A's and B's, the occasional C. You know, we can help you deal with, um, but that's number one. Number two um, is generally standardized test scores. That would be the ACT or the um, SAT. Um, that said, there's over a thousand colleges that don't require them. 
Um, so if you're not a great test taker, you have some options there, but um, standardized tests gives colleges a way to kind of judge across different high schools, which have different grading systems and standards, um, you know, what a student might, you know, be comparable to other students, you know, how they might compare. Um, and then from there, you know, it goes on. Most colleges uh, that we help students apply to will require letters of recommendation. So that's anywhere from one to two or three. Usually those are from junior year teachers in a core subject. That would be something like math, science, um, history, foreign language, English. You know, they're generally not looking for, say, you know, a music teacher or gym teacher or, you know, something like that for your primary recommendation. Um, and then there's uh, the guidance counselor also gives a people ask us, you know, where do I apply and how do I know if I'm going to get in? And of course, those are two sides of the same coin, right? You don't want to apply to schools that are, you know, not going to fit your needs or be too easy or too hard right. or that you're not going to have a very good chance at. Um, and so, you know, some students are what's called undermatched, which, you know, they don't aspire high enough and others are kind of unrealistic where they're, um, you know, you know, just applying only to the, the most elite colleges. And so our job is really one of, you know, the many things we do to help students is help them figure out that sweet spot. So there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, one of the easiest ways to start is to talk to your um, high school guidance counselor. They'll have a sense of uh, similar students, especially in your high school. And one thing that's important to remember is that you're judged in the context of your high school. So, for example, if you go to a high school where, um, oh, you know, there's, you know, very, um, you know, say upper middle class, uh, you know, wealthier socioeconomic group, uh, you know, in the suburbs of New Jersey, you know, the standard for what they're expecting in terms of grades or SATs is judged relative to your school. So, you know, if you're a valedictorian and an 80 person graduating class that doesn't offer any AP classes, they're all, their colleges are expecting one thing of you. And, uh, you know, maybe your high school averages a thousand on the SAT or lower. And, uh, you know, you may come from a school where everybody's taking 10 AP classes and, uh, you know, everybody's averaging a 1300 AP, uh, SAT, you're not gonna, um, be able to judge without that context. Right. right. So you have to understand your high school. And so the easiest way to do that is to start with your guidance counselor. Many, many schools in the U.S., um, high schools use a, a system that, that shows them the past data. Um, the two most common are Naviance and, and SCORE. And um, so ask your guidance counselor if your school uses that or ask them about past data. And the, the software has a scattergram and you can look and it'll show if you have uh, your GPA and uh, test scores entered, it'll show, a, you know, an X, Y axis chart, a Cartesian chart, and there'll be red X's for kids who applied in past years and didn't get in and green check marks for kids who did. And that's often the baseline. You can see how you compare. If there's a lot of green check marks around you, maybe your chances are pretty good. If there's a lot of red X's, maybe not so much. The mistake that a lot of kids make and, and families misunderstand is they look at these um, national stats and it's kind of like, you know, thinking the presidential election is, you know, going to be by the national popular vote where it's, you know, electoral college. So it's the same thing in, in high schools. Um, the way you're judged is not on a national basis. So you may see, for example, that, you know, the SAT range, uh, most colleges will publish um, what they call like the middle 50th percentile. So it'd be from 25th percentile to 75th percentile, and they don't show you above or below that. So they might say, for example, oh, our um, 25th percentile SAT is uh, 1,200, and our 75th percentile is 1,300. And right. someone says, great, I have a 1,250, I'm right in the middle, I'm going to get in, or I have a 1,300, or even a 1,350 on the shoe in that may or may not be true. Or they might look at the low end and say, oh, they need a minimum of 1200. I have 1150. I'm not going to get in. Again, that may not be true. It depends on your circumstance. It depends on your high school. It depends on the history of your high school with that college. 
it varies by year to year, etc. So the best way to get started again is to talk to your guidance counselor, look at Naviance or SCORE if your high school has that. Um, yes, you can look at some of the, you know, there's websites and books that have the, the SCORE ranges and things like that. Um, but you really need to talk to somebody who knows. There's a website called College Confidential that's very popular that often has students posting their stats and what their results were. And you can see maybe somebody with lower stats than you expect to get in, uh, you know, gained admission and maybe somebody with higher stats than you realized did not. And there's lots of reasons for that depending on the school. Perfect. Yeah, there's, a, like you said, there's a lot of variables and important, the important thing is to really sit down with your guidance counselor and come up with a plan. Uh, next question is, uh, is, what is the hook in a college admission? Right, so a hook. So you might hear this term hook, right? So what does that mean? Well, there are different definitions of the word hook, but in general it means like, um, you know, a good reason that they'll let you in, right? So the most common hooks are things like being a recruited athlete, which can be a big boost. Um, especially for so-called D1 schools, um, although even at D3 schools, you might get a significant boost as a recruited athlete. Um, being a legacy, meaning that your parents or even grandparents or siblings may have attended that um, university, either undergraduate or graduate. Um, one big hook that a lot of students aren't aware of is what's called first gen or first generation. And what that means is um, that it has different definitions, but one thing it usually means is that neither of your parents graduated for your college. Sometimes, uh, you know, there are some exceptions to that, whether it's a U.S. college, whether it's a custodial parent, that sort of thing. But in general, if neither of your parents graduated for your college, you're generally considered a first-generation student, even if, say, a sibling is going to college. And you can think of that as like, you know, look, these colleges want to encourage you know, upward mobility and students who might not have access to college um, to, you know, you know, enroll and, you know, be admitted. And so being first gen could be a huge step, up, a huge leg up in admissions that a lot of um, first generation students aren't aware of. Or lower cost options like community college for two years and then transferring to um, a more expensive university after that. So there's lots and lots of things, whatever your needs, Talk to a few counselors, see if they address them, and see if they bring up stuff you hadn't thought about, and that usually um, lets you know if it's right for you. Right. Uh, this is this is great. Uh, I think very informative for all those students out there who are going to be applying for college. Thanks again, Bruce Epstein at uh, First Choice College Counseling. Um, thanks for spending the time with us, and. Um, uh, I guess we'll wrap up this meeting.